after seeing President Joe Biden and President Donald Trump square off in the first presidential debate of 2024, many of us had more questions about their policies and records than before the debate. We are so confused. <laughs> However, at this time, no question is more significant to the American people than their age. Well, that's true. Let's turn to concerns that voters have about each of you. President Biden, you would be 86 at the end of your second term. Huh? Former President Trump, you would be 82 at the end of your second term. What? Because many people are asking, are they the best candidates we can have to manage our country? President Biden, how do you address concerns about your capability to handle the toughest job in the world well into your 80s? Well, first of all, I spent half my career being being criticized being the youngest person in politics. I was the second youngest person ever elected to the United States Senate, and now I'm the oldest. This guy's three years younger and a lot less competent. I think that just look at the record. Look at what I've done. Look how I've turned around the horrible situation he left me. As I said, 15 million new jobs, 800,000 manufacturing jobs, more investment in America, over million, billions of dollars in private investment in, uh, in, in enterprises that we are growing. We, by the way, we brought off a lot of people. Well, uh, the whole idea of computer chips, we used to have 40% of the market. We invented those chips, and we lost it because he was sending people to, cheap, to find the cheapest jobs overseas and to bring home a product. So I went, I went to South Korea. I convinced Samsung to invest billions of dollars here in the United States. And they're, guess what? Those fabs, they call them. To, 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 to build these chips. Those fabs pay over $100,000. You don't need a college degree for them. And there's billions, about $40 billion already being invested and being built right now in the United States, creating significant jobs for Americans all over the, from all over the world. President Biden, you have 40 seconds left. Would you like to add anything? Yeah, I would. The, the idea that somehow we are uh, this failing country. I never heard a president talk like this before. We, we're the envy of the world. I, name me a single major country president who wouldn't trade places with the United States of America for all our problems and all our opportunities. We're the most progressive country in the world in getting things done. We're the strongest country in the world. We're a country in the world who keeps our word, and everybody trusts us, all of our allies, and, our, and, our op, and our, those who he coddles up to, from Kim Jong-un, he sends love letters to, and Putin, et cetera. They don't want to screw around with us. Thank you. Former President Trump, to follow up, what do you say to voters who have concerns about your capabilities to serve? Well, I took two tests, cognitive tests. I aced them, both of them, as you know. It, we made it public. He took none. I'd like to see him take one, just one, a real easy one. Like, go through the first five questions, he couldn't do it. But I took two cognitive tests. I took physical exams every year. And, you know, we knock on wood wherever we may have wood that I'm in very good health. I just won two club championships, not even senior, two regular club championships. To do that, you have to be quite smart, and you have to be able to hit the ball a long way. And I do it. He doesn't do it. He can't hit a ball 50 yards. He challenged me to a golf match. He can't hit a ball 50 yards. Uh, I think I'm in very good shape. I feel that I'm as in good a shape as I was 25, 30 years ago. Actually, I'm probably a little bit lighter, but I'm in as good a shape as I was uh, years ago. I feel very good. I feel the same. But I took, I was willing to take a cognitive test. And you know what? If I didn't do well, I aced him. Dr. Ronnie Jackson, who's a great guy when he was White House doctor. And then I took another one, a similar one. And both, one of them said they've never seen anybody ace him. Thank you. President Biden? You can see he is six foot five and only 223 pounds, or 235 pounds. Well, you said six four, 200. Well, anyway, that's what you're... Anyway, just take a look at what he says he is and take a look at what he is. Look, I'd be happy to have a driving contest with him. The re I got my handicap, which when I was vice president, down to a six. Uh, and but by the way, I told you before, I'm happy to play golf if you carry your own bag. Think you can do it? That's the biggest lie that he's, he's a six handicap of all. I was an eight handicap. Yeah. Eight. Never. But I have, you know how many? How, I've seen you swing. I know you swing. Okay, let's let's, you know, let's you know, not act like children. President Trump, we're going to turn. Let's round. not act like children. Yes, Donald Trump appeared more alert and sound, and his speech was coherent, whereas Biden, on the other hand, looked incredibly fatigued and drowsy all night with phrases that were not coherent. 
and at some point it did look like President Joe Biden froze in place. Make sure that all those things we need to do, child care, elder care, making sure that we continue to strengthen our health care system, making sure that we're able to make every single solitary person eligible for what I've been able to do with the, uh, with, with, with the COVID, excuse me, with um, dealing with everything we have to do with, uh, look, if we finally beat Medicare. My question is, is this the best we can do? Well, we can do better than that. And how old is too old to be president? I honestly don't know. Are you serious? Those are old people. They are. They're both old.